Hey guys, it's Q here, and welcome to YouTube's most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga channel, Hold and Modify. And today, look at this, we have the Amiga uh, 3000 open again. And it's uh, because that SCSI drive is really loud and noisy, and it's really frustrating me. Um, I really want to get the SCSI to SD in there, or... Or another solution. I don't know. Maybe another SCSI drive that's not so noisy. Um, but one of the things I also want to do to this 3000 was try and get it uh, made uh, NTSC. It's a PAL 3000, and I want to go NTSC. And uh, you can flip the jumper on the motherboard from PAL to NTSC, but you know you also need the crystal in order for the CIA chips to properly work and... Uh, I thankfully, thankfully to Chris Edwards, he sent me those crystals. However, uh, it turns out that the uh, crystal that I need to change on the motherboard on the RE3000 motherboard is soldered to the board and I'm just, I don't have the skills to do that. So I'm not going to be able to make this 3000 an NTSC 3000. It's going to have to stay. But I do have uh, some other things I can do to this 3000. And that's going to be a Super Buster 11 chip because this 3000 only has a version 7. So here I have this beautiful uh, Buster 11 chip sent to me by John. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, it's, it's going to be, yeah, I'm going to, it takes me a minute to get it out of the bag. And there it is. Look at my, oh, and then I. I had a problem with the camera there. I am doing voiceover on this because I had a problem with the audio. I hope that's okay for all of you who are uh, listening. So that's the Buster 11 chip that I'm going to put in here. And I'm going to have to take this whole computer apart. So uh, I don't want to have you guys watch me take my 3000 apart yet again. So let's just go ahead and uh, buzz through this. Okay, so now let's get our stupid buster chip in here. Here's the PLC puller, PLCC puller, I guess it's called, yeah. Um, so what we need to do is uh, get, uh, we need to zoom in on this footage. This is too far away. You guys can't see anything. That's the chip right there. And I don't know what, what here we, yeah, good, good boy. So see, if you look at the chip um, and the, it's the thing right there, you can see that there's like two, rectangular looking slits on the edges right where my finger's at. Yeah, right there. And there's they're opposing each other. That's where the, the chip puller goes. See how it's open? See how the other two corners don't really have open access to the chip? Don't use those. Use the two corners of the chip socket that have open access to the chip. That's where that PLC puller goes. So when I first put the PLLC puller here, I do it wrong. Um, also, keep an eye out for the notch on the buster. So if you can look closely, there's a little notch, like a little dimple on the buster chip. That's the orientation it goes. And it, yeah, it's upside down versus the other chips around it, like the 68030 over there that's up to the upper right. It's upside down. And there you go. I'm, I'm highlighting with the screwdriver tip. That's the dimple. Just make sure that your dimple is aligned with that dimple. See, there you go. Trying to focus on the dimple there. Put your hand behind. There you go. Now it focuses. Just make sure that little dimple is in the same spot as the other dimple, and you'll be okay. And then, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the PLCC wrong here. No, not those holes. Not those holes. Q. Those. Yes, those holes. There you go. Just kind of stick them in there. Give it a little wiggle, squeeze, and then just kind of lift, wiggle straight up. And it's like, hold down the motherboard with the other hand. Pop, it'll come out. Yay. There you go. He pulled it out without ripping the socket apart. That's why that tool is fun. And yeah, you can see in the RE3000 RE, on the RE 3000 board, there's no holes to poke through the bottom there. So just orient the chip and then uh, drop it straight in. Push, pushing straight down, even force. There you go. All done. Yay. 
And now we can move on to the next thing, which is cooling that 68060. So if you look here closely on this 3000, you can see a tiny little Hobbit door in the right corner. See that? That's just big enough for a 40 millimeter fan. Now, our good Amiga uncle living in his basement, Chris Edwards, pointed out that a 40 millimeter fan can go down there and help keep things cool. And I think he actually posted a video recently showing this and I went ahead and did the same exact thing. And you know what? Pretty freaking amazing. You can fit this, there it is, little Noctua 40 millimeter fan. And on the RE3000 motherboard, there's actually conventional three pin fan headers that you could plug that directly into. However, mine did not come with those. So I had to use an adapter. But the point is, you can go ahead and just put that little fan down there in the corner. And how are you going to keep it in place? With this 3M red tape. This is 3M red outdoor tape. Not 3M red, 3M red outdoor. This stuff will withstand heat, humidity, cooling, everything. It's a beast. And then there's the uh, adapter to convert the three pin to a uh, Molex because I didn't have the uh, three pin connectors on my motherboard. So just know that, you know, it'll all work. You can get your adapters and, and you can put the uh, fan in that little tiny cubby area and, and secure it with the 3M tape. Now you could use like hot snot or glue to jam the fan down in there. But honestly, as you have already seen, how many times have I had to take apart my Mega 3000? I don't wanna do hot snot glue or anything that's you know gonna be a hassle because it's already such a hassle to take apart 3000 to do anything. So I'm gonna just stick to using that 3M uh, red tape to do it, to get the fan in there. And let's just stick it in there, yep, right there. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is just make sure it's not gonna you know, interfere with anything, that it, that it spins freely, that it's happy and doesn't like rattle or buzz against anything. And then just, yeah, use a, use a knife or some scissors and cut yourself off a little section of this 3M outdoor red tape and uh, just secure the fan so that it doesn't move around or bounce around or rattle. And that's it. I mean, it's, you can use, like I said, you could use hot snot glue and whatever, but eh, you know, then you gotta deal with it. You gotta rip it apart or cut into it and get rid of it. And with this tape stuff, this tape is as strong as it is. It's pretty easy to just pull up with a spudger or even your fingernails if you haven't cut them after a week. So let's just get that in there. And there you go. And now that'll actually successfully, as Chris Edwards noted, blow air across the uh, case and it'll pull air in from the other vents on the 3000 and it'll work with the airflow of the power supply because the power supply over there in the upper left is sucking air out. And so this little guy down here is gonna suck air in and you kind of get this awesome like airflow thing going and it really does work. It drastically cools the 060. And I do have, as you've seen in my previous videos, I have a heat sink on my 060. It's a very narrow, a very short, not too tall heat sink, but this fan combined with the heat sink just puts it, it, it just creates an amazing amount of airflow and cooling. And I have not had any issues with my 060 since this doing this little 40 millimeter fan mod. And again, thank you, Chris, for pointing that out as I fumble trying to connect a Molex connector. So that's enough of that. Let's move on. So at this point, I'm just putting the 3000 back together and we are reaching the end of this video. Uh, again, this is uh, another shorter video of mine. I'm trying not to be too long when they don't need to be too long, but yeah, I'm just going to put the 3000 back together. I really was hoping to get the S, uh, SCSI to SD in here, but it wasn't quite ready. And ultimately I'm, I'm having some issues with it that I need to sort and work out, but I'm going to have to do that in another video. But for now I've got the Buster 11 in there. I have the uh, cooling fan installed and yeah, I had to abandon my plans for the NTSC uh, switch, but uh, I'm going to just go ahead and get this put back together and uh, keep uh, amiging on. Amiga? Amiganing on? Is that a word? So thank you guys and gals for all watching again so much. Just uh, long live uh, Amiga stuff, right? And 
I hope, uh, I hope you found this video uh, at least informal or informant, if not entertaining, or maybe it allowed you to go to sleep. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.